Prior to coming to Ameren, I was a single mother of two. And there were times where I was definitely working two to three jobs, most of the time just to pay the bills. You put your head down, you knew you were the low man or woman on the totem pole. You did what you were told. If that meant you were sending faxes at 9 p.m. at night, that's what you did. I struggled a lot growing up and I didn't have a lot. My family didn't and you know, I just, I, I kept working hard. A few days before I was born, my dad lost his sister to spousal abuse and um, as a result, a big focus of my childhood for him was to make sure I was, you know, very independent, confident, was able to stand up for myself. After losing my sister, I took on her daughter. So I went from struggling to raise one child to all of a sudden raising two children. I was approached by somebody and they asked if I was interested in taking a test to be on the gas side for Ameren. One of the tests being was that you have to operate a trencher for the evaluation test. So I took it upon myself to go rent a backhoe. We went and picked it up and took it out in the middle of nowhere and went to town. <laughs> it can be very intimidating to be in a man's world. It can go both ways as well though. A lot of times they don't know how to accept a woman coming into a man's world. So I initially started going to college for welding just to get a job immediately. And a woman from the climbing program that was across the street, she came over, kind of put a bug in my ear, was like, hey, I'm wondering if you're interested in trying out my program. She was like, I think you'll do really well. I think you'll be successful at it. There's not much women in it. I didn't even know anything about linemen or climbing poles or anything like that, but I tried out for a boot camp. Ever since then, I mean, I loved it. So I was 23 years old when I had the opportunity to move to New York City and, uh, and from there on an opportunity to actually come to St. Louis, my CEO offered the opportunity for me to go be the CIO for the organization. My first reaction was, you know, I told him, you know, I have a two-year-old, I've spent nine months away from him, and oh, by the way, I plan on having another child. And uh, his first reaction to me was, I said, so what? you know, build the support system around you. And uh, that was a very special moment for me because, you know, here I was, I'd grown up with all this emphasis on being independent, being confident. I wasn't doubting my ability to do it as much as I was looking at my personal situation and thinking about all of the reasons why I probably couldn't be successful versus actually thinking about how could I be successful in it. I will often work you know, at the office during the work day, come home, be the mom that I want to be for my children. And then at times we'll get back online to work when I need to. You know, I've had leaders say to me, well, my wife and I decided that she would stay home after the second child was born. And I think we just need to be careful about how we talk about those concepts because not everyone is able to make that decision. Understanding that it's not, some women are on a mommy track or not on a mommy track, or uh, it's, that's not really black and white, right? We need to be providing different arrangements and possibilities for all of our leaders and coworkers that align with the value they can provide to Ameren and the value they can provide outside of Ameren. I think we all have an element of unconscious bias. There are times where people have said, oh, you, you can't pick that up or that's too heavy for you because you're a woman. And I think that um, notion kind of goes out the window after people see my work ethic. I'm a very devoted worker. I feel like I've kind of opened my own door in a way. So I think everyone pretty much, even the guys, have to prove themselves initially. You got to prove that you're a hard worker. And I guess I have to show a little more, um, you know, so I did. I think my issue, you know, being a woman, it's getting their trust. I look at some of the things we've rolled out with, you know, a flex work policy. I think about, you know, your dress for the day policy, right? It really sends the message of, you know, we want you to be who you are as you walk in the door. I just want to point out that as we think about, you know, gender parity and equality and diversity and inclusion. We have male champions here that are very important and integral to those conversations the same way that female champions are. 
I want to work at a company where you know I'm having fun. People are supporting other people. I'm welcomed. You know, I don't feel like an outcast or anything. I definitely, in the two and a half to three years that I've been here, um, I'm seeing more and more women in the industry. I think there's more doors opening. And to this date, I do believe I am the only woman to weld for Ameren, Illinois, which I am very proud of. That's a huge accomplishment. I'm very proud of my career, but it's not what I'm most proud of. Having the family that I have is definitely what I'm most proud of. I have three beautiful children. I think getting this job is my proudest moment. Ultimately, the goal is to live a life where I'm financially stable, you know, and I'm finally here.